this is the system change that we need to transit. How we reconnect with local wisdom, with all these biodiversity, nature opportunities that lies at the grassroots, that lies in these places full of abundance. How we rethink poverty. Um, we do not want to leave anyone behind, but as you say, we are. And stories you were telling, this is about ways not doing that. Now, we all know that we're at a historical moment. And the, what's causing it is that the rate of change and the degree and extent of interconnection have both been going up at an exponential rate since 1700. And now they're going up really fast and each feeds the other. That's the underlying historical force. And as those two curves go up, there's another curve that is plunging downward. And that's the old society. And people who have the abilities for the old society and not the new are going down. And organizations and communities and cities and countries that are not making that transition are going down. And they're, we're, we're crushing these people. So I'm going to come back to that. But let's start with uh, the more positive side here. Um, we are at a turning point. We build up to this and you know, exponential curves reach a point where they just force the whole society. And we're past the early adopters, we're into the 80% moving. Everyone here is a part of that. And this means if you're going to be able to contribute, you have to be able to play in the new, everything changing, everything connected, faster and faster, broader and broader. And if you think it's fast now, imagine what it's going to be like in 15 years. So just to put this in perspective, when Homo sapiens crossed the mouth of the Red Sea, the biggest human organization was somewhere between 100 and 150 people. And now we have two countries over a billion and we're all together because of the web and we've added on AI. What's going on here is very fundamental. I think we are becoming one organism, a brain-like organism. It's organized completely different from the old patterns. And um, you can see it coming and we are having, Everyone here is having a great time because we're a part of it and we're helping one another get there. And that's what this meeting is about in part. Um, it's particularly critical for young people. It's inexcusable to crush people. It's 10 times inexcusable to prevent young people having the tools they need to be able to contribute. And that means they have to have the new abilities so that they can contribute to change. Now, Ashoka has 4,000 fellows. Three quarters have changed national and or international policy within five to 10 years. The, the biggest single group is focused on young people, 1,400. 87% of them put kids in charge in a million schools across the world. And the results are very dramatic. Now, we can do that for every kid in the world. We know how to do this. These are not rich kids in privileged schools that the fellows are focused on. Um, the moment a kid has the experience, I've had a dream, I've built a team, I've changed my world. They have it, they have their PhD for a world of change. Please give me a problem. Um, now, we can do that for the most disadvantaged parts of the world. And we have to. Um, then you can be creative. Um, so it's entrepreneuring for the whole. you got to see the whole, understand the whole. 
And this is part of the abilities. But once you have that, well, you have to be creative. You have to see new combinations and how to make those happen. And, you know, that's just such a source of pleasure and happiness. But we have to give people the ability to do that. And so um, when you help, let's say, a young person have that experience, that's life-changing. You've done something so profound. 